Hey Stampin' Friends, Darlene with Darlene Stamps. Thanks for joining me. I want to uh, showcase Mary Moose and the bundle that it comes with. It was actually last year and I thought it was super fun. I love the punches. Um, but what I want to do is I want to showcase these little cubes and um, I made two samples. We'll make one this, uh, this, this video. But this is um, a design and a video that I watched from our UK pal, um, Sam Poodle from poodles.com. And so I want to give her credit for the cute little design. And so we're just going to get started and I'm going to jump right in because, um, you're first going to take, oh, and I want to also look at, um, this paper. This actually also came back from last year. This is the Feels Like Frost. And it's beautiful, um, kind of picturesque kind of um, photos, designer paper. And then the other side has the silver. So we're going to do that and then just kind of showcase that. So um, the piece that you're going to use, the cardstock, is going to be the, um, it's going to be 10, cut 10 and a half by 8. And then we're going to score it. So let me get my scoreboard up here. And I'm going to use this. And so you're going to score at two on the long side. Two and a half by five. And seven and a half. And ten. And then turn it just clockwise once. And you'll do... The two and a half and five and then seven and a half. Okay, now, oops, on my papers. I um, was trying to find an easier way to do this just so that it would save some time. And so what I did was um, I made a copy of how it's going to look. And once I get it cut, cut out, I will show you this. But, um, um, and then on color stock, just want to make sure that um, the valley goes in, mountain is out. So that's how I remember um, just from the scoring standpoint. But this is um, countdown number four. Four. and um, I've been doing my pumpkins and I try to do a couple of them so hopefully you've cut a couple of those and watch those um, the other part of the videos that I do is just either tips or try to do the elements of card making so anyhow so we've got everything scored so we're going to keep this as our template so that we get all the things cut that we need to. So we've got this, let's put this this way. So here is our, here's our elements and we are going to not use these over here. So I am just going to um, crimp, no, no, not, I'm kind of like angling it. So I'm going to angle it there. If I angle it first, then when I cut up um, on that score, then it's already cut. And we're going to cut this away. And try to, I didn't follow my, didn't follow my uh, line. Okay, so here's where I'm at. Now we're going to cut up on these and um, when you, because um, this one will become my um, my top piece. So we want to make sure to cut on the inside of the score line. And I'll, I'll tell you why in just a minute. And um, cutting these up will make it for our lid. And this one we're going to take and do a miter cut on it. Okay, and then we are going to miter this one. And it really kind of takes the bulk of that um, score line out and does the miter. All right, and then this one's going all the way away. Cut that one away. And there we go. All right, we're going to keep this piece. 
Okay, so now we've got that done. Now we are going to cut. We're going to leave this side. This is already a cut side. Now we're going to go to this side and just, we're not going to do any kind of mitering, um, but we will cut these down because this will be the base of the box. Okay, and I just, I cut them in a little bit, um, and I've made, when I made the first two, it just seemed like there was a lot of bulk, and I'm also going to miter um, these only because um, when, when you put it together, uh, it, it does make it nice when um, the box fits good, and each person has their own technique. I I did those first two, and really, truly, it seemed like it went together okay, but I had to fuss with it, so I didn't want to fuss as I was doing this, and so, anyhow, it just seems, for me, it seemed to go a little bit quicker when they were mitered. Anyhow, it just takes a little bit of the bulk out. Okay. So now, get my pieces and keep these off this side. That's for something else I'll let y'all show you in a minute. Okay, so here's where we're at. All right, so it looks just like our pattern. Now, except for we need to go come in. So the this one's going to be our lid. So this is going to come down. And I'm just going to shave off a little bit of that here and a little bit of that here. All right, so as you can see, it looks just like our pattern. All right, we'll put the pattern away. And um, now we are going to, <clears throat> yes, yes, no, yes. <laughs> okay, so um, I am not gonna use the, the pattern. I'm gonna use the silver on here. These are two and a quarter. And I was going to, um, I was going to use snail, but just for the sake of having it glue a little quicker, we're just going to put this down. I had kind of a quandary what I wanted to use as my base, so I asked my wonderful husband just to give insight. And he says, well, since you're doing Christmas, doesn't green make sense? And I thought, huh, amazing man. So this actually, the base cardstock is Tranquil Tide. A little deeper green. It's just something I had in my stash. So it can be pretty much anything. Um, and with it being Christmassy, I thought it would be a nice little pattern. Okay, so we are going to, all right, got those down. Now we're gonna use a pretty strong tape. So I'm gonna use the, um, on the same side as the uh, pattern paper, we're going to use our, our tape. This tear tape is really nice because it, you don't have to have scissors where you're trying to hold it. And uh, yeah, makes for a nice, a nice aspect of our paper. And there we go. Okay, so now, so we'll flip it over. And this goes here, and we are going to move this and put that down. And then I try to get a little bit more of a press on that. Okay, so we are now forming the box. Oh, we also need to take, I should have done this first and I forgot. We're also going to round the um, lid with the corner rounder. And you know, um, I tried to have my standby. I couldn't find my nice one, my big one. Okay, so we need to get um, we need to get our box put together. So if I hold those down, what I have learned now this is of course the front. So this will be our piece that goes all the way in, and we are going to just move these, put this down. So anyhow. Um, what I was hoping for is a um, um, a real easy way to um, show the box and just put um, a little bit of, of interest in some of the pieces 
that are um, in our catalog. So that's what I thought would be fun to do. All right, so that kind of keeps it square. Let me get my little piece. This is a perfect, you don't have to get your fingers in there and the box tastes flat. By doing it that way, all the pieces, looks like I still came over. Shoots. All right, so here I was trying to miter and that's how we fix that. Duh. Okay, so um, now that we have that done, I thought when I was trying to put this open, it was going to make it really nice, and it does, trying to get the lid. I put a little hole in there. Get your, your thumb in there. And I forgot. I noticed that when I put this together, when I put this down, it um, was a little tight. So I was going to miter it, and I didn't. So this is what we need to do. This is what, you know, I made these, and sure shooting. I was going to try to remember to do it, and I didn't. That's the whole point. So, I do it on camera, and then all, all is well. All right. So, then, this goes right in. Come on. There. Well, honest. Honestly. What did I not do? Oh, ah, I remember. All right, so when we glued it together, there's a piece that um, has that glue in there. And if I don't get the glue all the way tight, so here you go, trying to show <laughs> how easy it is. And I, ah, okay. Let's see, let's see if I do this. If I can get. See, that piece came together, and when it did, it, I should have pushed that down. There. Now let's see if I can get this to go. There. Oh my goodness. Okay, now, okay, so now we have that done. And the whole point I thought was nice is that, um, as it comes up that I added, was having this right here that cut out actually helped that to um, be easier to open. Now I used, um, oops, oops, I used the, um, this is rich razzleberry. I thought it kind of looked good with this because I want the front and I'm going to hide it. I'm going to start here and I'm going to form it all the way around. And by doing this, Two things happen. One, it gets it gets crimped and folded. The second is that when I come around to the front, I make sure that I am straight. So now that I know that I'm straight, now I'll just glue. So anyhow, this was, um, I thought by far, um, a really neat box to, um, to have for, I don't know, candles, candy, um, all of those wonderful things and, um, and then trying to just put together things for Christmas and by going around like this, um, it lays the box flat, which, whoops, which means that the glue stays intact as it needs to be. And so all the way around, it stays not only crimped together, but it stays, um, in a mode of staying straight. Okay, and actually, let me come in just a fuzz because my center is going to be overlapping and I want my um, circle to be in the middle. Okay, so we have that in. And then this piece that we cut out, we're going to use that. And I want to use the one and a half. Use the one and a half. So that uses that piece. And then we're going to use white. And I have been using this extra piece forever and ever, it seems like. Um, and part of Mary Moose has this cute little saying, Mary Chris Moose. I'm not sure if that's sacrilegious, but... I think it's kind of fun. Right? Yeah. Okay. 
and it also fits in the circle. So let me get my circle here and we'll probably use the green since green is our base. Okay, thought I had it out, but I didn't. All right, so now in the hopes of getting a circle here, put that right there. Um, and you may or may not have the chamois. I don't know what, I had someone ask me what I do with my stamps. I try to wash them right after I have um, used them um, just to keep the glue, I mean, ah, ah, the ink <laughs> from, from, um, oh, and that's not going to work. That amazing is too low. All right. So let me get my stash. These are my pieces that I save when I cut out, um, and really kind of helps especially when you've got, oh, that would be nice, um, when you've got extra pieces of the white. So, all right, so now what we need to do is put this back. There we go. So, um, this is also, I want to show kind of with the, um, with this, with a bigger circle, and I'm cutting out a smaller circle. Sometimes holding it in um, will be a little challenging so let's see if I can center it and not nope all right so what I'm going to do is make a like a little um handle <laughs> that's what I call it <laughs> but uh yeah that way I can get it in there and get it right center there and I can just take that off if I don't need the extra bulk voila now I did, um, I had the piece pop out from the white. This time I'm going to have a pop up from the green. So just how it sounds, just how it feels. And then, um, so we got that done and now, oh, I have my mousse already. There it is. Okay, I already have this stamped, so let me just pop this out. And I wasn't sure, you know, whenever I pop, um, I do the stamping, I try to do two of them because I never know what's going to turn out. So if you do two, then you're not going to have any problem with one that looks good, one that looks like eh, doesn't look as good. And then this little squirrel guy looks very, very cute. So I thought I would do a squirrel just in case I, because the moose, I didn't do the kissing one where they would be, you know, like the opposite way. So I decided that I would do this little squirrel guy. And that way, if I wanted to, um, do one squirrel and one moose, I could. So that's kind of my thought process. But, you know, we'll see how it goes. And sometimes with having um, a little bit of a um, show and tell, I try to have the um, aspects of not only showing it. Okay, so. So I'm going to put the moose here, which will be just fine. And I put the other one there. So that will be good. Ah, see, and he's just too little. So we're not going to use him. Okay, um, let me put my pieces on here. We'll assemble this and then we'll call it good. So I'm going to try to get another one loaded with a project and... So the cube was, I thought, a really cute idea, and so I, I wanted to borrow it from, from Sam. And then, um, uh, you know, there's such an amazing amount of people who have such great ideas, so I want to give them credit. Um, and then just try it on my channel. Just try to, to um, utilize not just, not just the... the um, aspects of our 
um, uh, Christmas stuff, but also for the supplies. So, and you know, I think it's interesting as we all have different ways that we put stuff together. It's just nice to be able to share it and go, okay, here's what I did. And I hope that it works for you. So anyhow, so there is the Merry Moose. And then of course we have the, the just a smile. And then we have bright and pink. So anyhow, there you go. I hope you enjoyed that. Again, thank you for my new subscribers. And I hope that the, the tips and ideas are something that has, has inspired you and brought you into um, a different realm of Christmas season. Have a great day. Talk to you soon.